Hi everyone, Mark DeJesus here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the power of self-compassion. What does it mean to really engage looking at yourself and your life through the lens of compassion? I'm so passionate about helping people to engage the power of God's love. God's love is available to you right now. Right now where you're at in your current situation. The question is, are you able to receive it? And in my journey over these years of helping people to experience healing, freedom, and transformation, I found that so many of us, a large percentage of us, are honestly admitting to struggle to receive his love. We know in theory it's there. We can say, God, you love me. His love is there. We can quote scriptures. But there's a true block. When you look in the mirror, you look at yourself, when you look over your circumstances, when you look over what's going on inside, a lot of times people feel very disconnected to love. And one of the ways we can engage God's love is by looking at our inner life through the lens of his love, to see yourself with compassion, to practice seeing your life and your journey through self-compassion. So let me ask you, are you able to see yourself through the lens of love, through the lens of grace, through the lens of compassion? Because usually in the midst of our struggle, it reveals how hard we are on ourselves, how you look, how you sound, where you fail, where you fall short, your past failures, your past mistakes, your flaws, the issues of your life that don't seem to change, your circumstances that are really difficult, the situations you come up against that are overwhelming and they really take you on for size and discourage you and wear you out. Many times in our lack of self-compassion, we look for quick fixes. Okay, rescue me. God, rescue me. Get me out of this. I, I, get me free from this. I hate how this feels. I hate how it feels to be in this situation, to struggle. You're going through suffering, you're going through difficulties or trials, or you're going through just internal battles you can't seem to break through. If you notice in the midst of it, you feel separated from love. You feel disconnected to love. Because what love does is it settles the waters in your heart. It lets you know that God has not disappeared. He has not left you. He's not forsaken you. In fact, he may be closer than ever right now, but your feelings struggle with it because of various reasons and mindsets, but you've not been used to what it means to be loved in your battles. We've been taught a very performance-driven, achievement-driven kind of relationship with God. We're, when we're doing good, we feel better about ourselves, and therefore we feel this love connection, quote-unquote. But it's a performance-based, it's a conditional love. It's not the true love of God who loves you exactly where you're at. So in that lack of self-love, self-hate starts to rise up, self-accusation, self-condemnation. We beat ourselves up for where we're not growing. We beat ourselves up for what we're not experiencing. And here's the key one. You cycle in those things that you feel like haven't changed. The struggle is still there. That anger struggle, that anxiety struggle, that depression struggle, that health struggle, that relationship thing. And then we start to magnify it because we feel disconnected to love, and when you're disconnected to love, we magnify our problems. They become big, huge. We feel separated from God. Then we start spiraling. We start dominoing. We start ruminating. And then we just feel that hopelessness, and most people just pull the numb switch, right? They just shut off the heart. I don't want to feel this anymore. And then we just kind of check out, and we have our end-of-day habits that disconnect us from facing our pain and disconnect us from even really facing the issues of our life. Why? Because the reality is we don't know how to experience true love. We don't know how to look at our lives through the lens of compassion. Because everything Jesus did when he engaged people was seeing through the eyes of love and then acting out of that. Love sets the atmosphere and the context for what you need to look at, how you need to look at it. And then what does it look like moving forward from that? And most people skip past love. Hear me. You skip past the love step in your life. You're okay. What do I need to do? What's the 10 steps? What's the three things? Mark, help me. What do I need to do to fix? We go to the fix thing, right? We've got this hostility in ourselves. And then what happens is not only are we hard on ourselves, that then manifests in our relationships. 
we are hard on other people. And if you're hard on other people, it's a result of you being hard on yourself. You give out that which you cultivate in your own life. Or certain people go, well, I don't want to treat others with what I'm feeling inside. So then we live in a performance mentality. We love others, but we ignore and neglect ourselves, which leads to burnout because we're not flowing out of what we've received. We're giving out of something, but we don't realize we're giving out of fumes. We're not giving out of a healthy rhythm of what's been placed in our own life. God intended for true ministry to be you give out what you have received and cultivated in your own life. It's not something to feel bad about. It's something to just recognize this is what I need to move towards more, right? And all of this is coming out of because we don't know how to receive self-compassion. Now, when you're able to receive compassion for yourself, you're able to face yourself, I remember sometimes in one-on-one settings, I could feel that self-hatred rising up in a person I'm working with. And so I would just grab this mirror next to me and I would put it in front of them and I would say, tell me what you see when you look at this person, meaning themselves. And boy, they would feel so awkward. Sometimes they just say, can you, do I have to do this? They couldn't look at themselves. Many were initially focused on their physical flaws, their aging, their wrinkles, their, their, their fat or their hair or whatever it is. They, 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 their nose is too big, their chin sticks out. Whatever it is, they just kind of focus on that. And then even if they, if they can get past that, they just can't face themselves. And it reveals it. The love of God allows us to face ourselves without shame, without condemnation, because the work of Christ that we've received, if you've received that, the Bible says you are a child of God. You're able to face yourself without guilt and shame and condemnation. You're able to relax in his love because you're not connected to God because of your performance or how good you're doing. You're connected to him because of what somebody else did for you because of his love for you. It's amazing, right? But we don't know how to face ourselves. So in my coaching work with people, my number one priority is not to fix anyone. In fact, years ago, I let go of trying to fix anybody. And I actually found it brings more results in people's lives because I let go of that weight. Jesus is the only superhero anyway. So why try to be a superhero and try to fix? And even if you have great answers and you have great insights, I make my number one priority to set a safe atmosphere of love that somebody will be able to experience the saving, safety, power of God's love over their life. And so I began to develop this statement that I would say to people because usually when you first meet them, they feel like they're drowning. They feel like they're just struggling so much. And I would teach them this very simple statement that I began to use in my own life. Look at everything you're going through, face yourself in the mirror and say this statement. It's okay that I'm not okay right now. Because usually what happens is in the battles that we have, it creates an internal hostility, a stress. And then you feel disconnected from love. You feel disconnected from peace. You just have this war going on inside of you. So you have two choices. You just spin in that irritability or you shove it and numb out and live in a form of denial and push it away. Now, both of those are not helpful. What is helpful is engaging the power of God's love. Now, when I first started to say that over my life, I immediately felt a resistance rise up in me. Like it rose right up in my chest. I could feel it like right here, just pushing it away. Nope, this can't be. Nope, this can't be. You've got this, you've got that, you've got this. It'd point to all my battles. It just start to accuse me on all the situations that weren't at peace or the battles I still had or the obsessions I was still struggling over, the anxiety or depression or relationship struggles or these things I need to fix, 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 right? And it would just keep me disconnected. So I allowed myself to just continue to engage the loving acceptance of God to engage self-compassion. And when that resistance rose up, I'd be like, it's all right, God, because you love me. And I would allow myself to feel the discomfort because in that moment, it's uncomfortable. 
you're you're seeking to receive love, but there's a great deal of resistance. This is where the rubber meets the road, where most people give up and other people break through. What I decided was, I'm going to be okay that this resistance is here because I know God's greater. I just can't feel it right now, and it's all right. I'm going to allow myself to just stay in this discomfort and let the love of God cast out fear. I'm going to let the love of God displace this condemnation. I'm going to let the love of God fill the empty places of my heart. And this is where true heart healing can begin in its greatest power. I wrote a book called The Heart Healing Journey, and I encourage you to get a copy of it because it, um, it's simple, profound, but it gives a blueprint of how to begin to walk some of these things out. And I talk about self-acceptance and the power of what it means to not first try to fix yourself, because you can't fix yourself anyway. It's only God can truly bring dynamic long-term transformation in your life, right? We just wear ourselves out, or we have something that we build up that we got to hold with our own effort. What we need is the gracious love of God to have its work. But what you have to understand is when God interacts with you, His priority is not always to try to fix you first. His priority is relationship. He sent his son to die, not so that he would nag you about all the things you need fixed, but to have connection with you. So it's love first. It's always love first, because in the midst of love, change will be a byproduct. It'll just happen. You can't help but being changed. The problem is that we've reversed the order. It's we do change first, then be loved. We we have a, a... a undercurrent of thought that says, when I start to get it together, I'll feel better. And that feel better means I'm loved now. And it's deception. We focus on the change and fix. So then when we don't see it, we hide in shame or we just stew in beating ourselves up in anger and hostility. The problem is we don't know how to relate to God's love apart from our performance. And that is a shift that God is leading us to over and over again. Our evaluation of our Christian walk is based on how well we are performing. So ask the average Christian, how's your walk with God going? Nine times out of 10, the answer you hear is, well, you know, I need to read the Bible more. I I really should probably pray more. And the reality is their life is based on performance. So no wonder they're not doing it. No wonder they're exhausted because they've not plugged into relationship because they don't know how to receive God's love. They don't know how to face their pain and brokenness with his love being there in the midst of it. And so we try to fix ourselves. And notice when you talk to other people and they bring their problems, you're exhausted. So you just try to slap at them some quick fix solution for their own life. You don't have capacity to just love them as you're struggling in your own mess, right? So God doesn't change your problem, then love you. He loves you first. And the Bible even says we love him because he first loved us. Your ability to love God, if you're trying to love God, trying, I'm going to love him, I'm going to love him. You receive his love. That's where you start. You don't start by trying to love him. You love him because he first loved you. He set the stage for this relationship. Now, God, in his love, he doesn't leave you unchanged, okay? If we engage God in his full love and there's never any change, you go, oh, are we really engaging the pure love of God? You can't help but experience change because the beauty of his love and grace is heart transforming. It's mind altering. It's, it just revolutionizes everything. But the thing is, is that God doesn't force change upon you. Now, the enemy does through condemnation and accusation. He forces issues on you to create this burden that you carry. God is very content walking with you from glory to glory, day in and day out. He doesn't change you by force. He changes you in the context of relationship and you just yielding to that work. So I found that loving acceptance caused me to calm down Take a deep breath and let him settle me in the day-to-day walking instead of the hurrying and God fix kind of panicky, pressure-filled type of lifestyle that so many of us live in, right? 
Now, 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 let me make this clear because when we talk about loving acceptance and, and self-acceptance, there's many different avenues you could hear in videos and content and books, right? And Christians can say, well, this is, you know, it's leading us to compromise. Love is being redefined, right? And I understand that. And I agree with many people that are concerned about that. Love doesn't ignore sin. It creates the environment by which sin can be dealt with, eradicated, changed, broken free in your life. It sets the environment. I mean, how many of you have ever sat in a setting where somebody just condemningly yelled at you, beat you up, and you walked out of there, what they might have said could have been true, but it was a bunch of stuff that just beat you up. Have you ever been in that moment where somebody just really loved you and they they loved you enough and spoke truth, but it was in love and it awakened something in you and you're never the same? I have those key moments in my life where a conversation with my wife or a leader or somebody who had influence in my life or a friend, they spoke it, but it was it was it was the right time, it was loving, and it changed my life. But see, loving relationship has to be there first, has to be established, or else many times we're just coming under the yoke of accusation and condemnation. God's emphasis is always on relationship. Otherwise, you're going to be conditioned to only like yourself when you're doing well, and you'll always live in a performance-driven lifestyle. Love slows you down. It leads you into a different rhythm, a different value system, causes you to face yourself so you don't have to be ignorant to things anymore or in denial and you don't but you also don't have to just drown many of us are drowning today in overwhelm the love of god leads you into a settling connecting relationship then you see things the way that he sees them and then you see what you need to pay attention to so that becomes your focus and all the other stuff is just distraction the way i illustrate it is many people in their battles they're drowning they feel like they're drowning and the thing that happens is when somebody's drowning if you go if you're not careful if you go to help them if they don't calm down they could drown you because in their flailing they'll pull both people down right so the number one thing you got to do when you're helping someone out in, in water is to calm them so that then they can work with you in what you're seeking to do. Now, many people are flailing and drowning. They're underwater and the sand is everywhere, the garbage is everywhere, or whatever is there, the, the, you know, the stuff that's keeping you from view. The love of God has a way to settle the sand and the debris down to the bottom. So then you can see what you need to see in front of you. Now, the an analogy of swimming underwater is a great analogy to our walk with God because when you see, if the waters are amazingly clear, you go, wow, I can see so far. But you could still only see so far. You can't see forever. But you can see better than you did before. You see, we only see through a glass dimly, the, Paul the Apostle said, right? So even at your best day, you're not seeing perfectly crystal clear. But you see enough to know what you need to pay attention to. And that's what the love of God does for your life. So I want to encourage you to practice self-compassion. And you can start that with a simple statement. God, you love me. I choose to love myself. I have what it takes to overcome. And it's okay that I'm not okay right now. You love me. You accept me where I'm at. Make that transition by just saying those simple statements to yourself. Let yourself marinate over that, the, the power of the truth of how much God loves you right now, and give that to yourself. If the videos that I produce are a blessing to your life, go to markdehesus.com, subscribe to my mailing list, subscribe to my video channels. You can see me on social media as well, too. You can also uh, click on the donate button to do a one-time donation or to become a regular subscriber. Also get a copy of the Heart Healing Journey. I look forward to continually encouraging you to live healed, free and transformed in your life. God bless you. See you next time.